Hi guys, it's Holly from Becky Ellington Swim Stars. Now today, I know you're supposed to be having your swimming lesson with your friends and your teacher at the swimming pool. However, due to current restrictions and the lockdown, we can't, unfortunately. But I have got a super interactive and fun session all about water safety just for you, right from the comfort of your own home. So let's get started, shall we? So, like I said, we're going to do water safety. We're going to look at the RNLI's Swim Safe Water Safety Passport number one. This activity is all about being safe and having fun around water. A little later on as well, we'll meet Stormy San, Choppy the Cat and Ruff the Dog. First, you're going to learn about four very important messages about how to stay safe when you're in or near water. Once you know these messages, you will each receive your level one water awareness passport. This is gonna prove that you're an expert when it comes to water safety. Now let's see who loves water and playing in water just like me. Who loves having a bubble bath at the, at the end of a really long day and you love having a soap with all those, with all those bubbles? It's one of my favorite things to do. How about when we're on holiday and we go to the beach, we do some surfing, swimming in the sea, even back building some sandcastles. That is honestly my favorite type of day out. Who else has a dog and loves to go walking your dog down by the river or the canal? I have three doggies. And I love taking them down to the canal and they love swimming too. And lastly, for this one, I want you to shout me and put your hands in the air as loud as you can when I say this one. Who loves going to the swimming pool and going for their swimming lesson? Me! That's right. I used to love going to the swimming pool for my swimming lesson. And I still love going to the swimming pool today for a swim and also to teach you guys. So other than having a great time, lots of fun, spending time with our friends and family, what other thing, what one more thing do all of those things have in common, do you think? That's right, water. So let's have a look at those four important messages, shall we? They are stop and think, Stay together, float, and call in the emergency services, 999 or 112. First of all, we're going to stop off at stop and think. Now you need to become a detective. The reason why you need to get your magnifying glass out and have a look on the page to see if there are anything that could cause any dangers. Let's do it together now, shall we? So here, these guys are playing football a little bit too close to the edge, aren't they? Could fall off and hit themselves on those rocks. What about this guy? He's about to stand on a jellyfish. Oof, that's gonna hurt. This dude in the middle, Surfing and about to fall off is a little bit too close to the edge, isn't he? A bit too close to the shore and it could be quite shallow there and it could hit his head. Another fun fact, guys, is when you're at the beach, you're likely to see some flags. Just like these ones. The red and yellow flag, you'll normally see two of these and it means that you can only swim in between these flags which means this, these guys here are going to get themselves into trouble because look at this dude on the jet ski. He's going to crash into them. There are a few more dangers and hazards, guys, on this beach. Can you point them out for me? Even circle them. That's right. What about these rocks? And this little boy here that's gone outside of the flags. By, 
Spotting and thinking about dangers before you make the choice to do something can help keep you and other people safe. Fantastic, guys. So, on to our second key message. Staying together. So, what do you think this means, guys? Does it mean we should go to the beach by ourselves? Does it mean you should go to your swimming lesson by yourself? Of course not. It means we should stay together. So we should always go with a responsible adult. So that could be mom, dad, grand, granddad, uncle, auntie, carer, carer or guardian. Staying with an adult and holding their hand when asked to is so important as it means that they can make sure that you don't get lost on a busy beach. It also means that if you're swimming in water and get into difficulty, the grown-up is there to help you. So what do we never do? We never go swimming by ourselves. That's right. Our next one we're going to look at is float. This rule is super important if you ever fall into cold water. If that happens, your body will be shocked by the cold temperature and this can make you gasp for air or swallow some water. So instead, what I want you to do is relax and float until you are calm. <clears throat> I tell you what, a top tip here, a great place for you to practice your floating is your swimming lesson, of course. But let's do it now. I want you to lie on the floor in your living room and I want you to, first of all, practice your star floats, just like the girl in the picture. So we're gonna put our arms right out wide, stretch our legs out, Look up to the ceiling and push our bellies up. And I want you to count to five doing that. Let's do it together. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Some other ways that we can float and different shapes that we can practice are our rocket shapes, soldier shapes, and even our mushrooms grabbing our knees into a ball. Great guys. And lastly, we're looking at the emergency services where we call 999 or 112. As I'm sure you've all heard before, we have the police, we have firefighters, and we have the ambulance service. All these three services will help you if you were ever to get into some difficulty in and around water. Do you know the emergency service for the water side, for the seaside? It's the Coast Guard. Brilliant. So back in that picture, back when we looked at stop and think, there was a man in a yellow t-shirt with red shorts on. Do you know what he's called? You usually find him at the beach or at a swimming pool. That's right, he's a lifeguard. They are there to help you if you get in any trouble at all. So if we haven't got a phone and we haven't got a grown up, which we all always should do remember, but if we don't, how else do you think you can attract attention and get help? by using what do you think? Our voices. So now we're gonna do some practicing. Mums and dads, don't shout at me. So we're gonna practice shouting for help. You need to loosen up because we're gonna get those arms moving and using our big outdoor voices. So I either want you to run to the top of the garden or the bottom of the drive we're going to practice shouting for help to see if mum and dad can hear us from the house. So when I say three, you're going to shout help 
as loud as you can. Are you ready? This is just a practice. Three, two, one. Help! Brilliant. Was it loud? Did mum and dad come? Could they hear you? Now, now I want you to go either to the top of the garden or the bottom of the drive. Make sure mum and dad have said it's okay. And let's see if they can hear you all the way from the house. I'm going to count to three and you're all going to shout help at the same time. Are you ready? Three, two, one, help! Brilliant. I think I could hear you all the way from here. Next one. Now that you can hear us shouting help, I want to see if we can make some movements as well that make anyone that are really far away see that we need some help. So this time, last one, I promise, is we're going to wave our arms in the air, shouting for help as loud as we can. Are you ready? All together. Three, two, one. Help! Fantastic. Now you need to make sure that you're always with someone and you always have a phone nearby. But if you don't, you get into trouble. Make sure you use that big outdoor voice, waving your arms about, shout for help. Brilliant. So with all of those four things in mind, guys, the next thing I've got for you is a song to help us remember. Are you ready to join in? A little bit karaoke, a little bit like karaoke this. All together now. Fantastic. Your singing voice is 10 out of 10. All I've got in my head now is stop, is it safe? Think, is it safe? That's all I can sing. That's all that's going around in my head. So now, guys, before we met Stormy Sam, Choppy the Cat and Ruff the Dog, didn't we? We're going to read a story now, A Day by the Water. So, Choppy the cat 
and Ruff the dog are best friends. They do everything together. They go to the same school, share the same friends, and he even have the same snack. When Stormy Stan took them for their swimming lessons, Choppy and Ruff both learned to swim at the same time. And then we were very proud how they could swim. And they've just learned to float without their armbands. One sunny day, Stan took them for a picnic in the park. Choppy and Ruff were running and jumping around while Stan set up the picnic in the picnic blanket. He had their favourite cheese sandwiches and was sorting out their lunch. Choppy and Ruff were having a brilliant time climbing the big oak tree and playing with Ruff's new kite. Don't go too far, called Stan. We won't, replied the friends at the same time. They often said the same thing at the same time. Just then, Choppy spotted a duck. Three yellow ducklings. Look, Ruff, she shouted, jumping up and down excitedly. But the ducks were too quick and they disappeared into the trees before Ruff could see them. What is it? asked Ruff. Ducks! Let's follow them, said Choppy, still jumping up and down. She loved chasing birds. Ruff wasn't sure. But Stan told us to stay near where he can see us, he said with a worried look on his face. So guys, what do you think Ruff and Choppy have got to make a decision about here? Do you think they need to think about stop and think, stay together, float, or call the emergency services? I think it's staying together. Yes, that's right. They're talking about going following the ducks and that's not in an area that Sam can see them, can he? What do you think they should do? Let's see, shall we? Ruff looked back at Stan, who was still unpacking the boxes from their picnic basket. I don't think the ducks have gone too far, said, said Choppy. They've probably headed to the lake just over there, she urged, pointing down towards the bridge. Come on! The friends ran down the steep hill towards the lake. They could see the ducklings hopping onto the calm waters one after another. Let's go onto the bridge so they can look, we can get a better look, said Choppy. Now feeling excited, she, could, she would get to see the ducklings up close. As the friends stood on the low bridge, a gust of wind swept Ruff's kite straight out of his hands into the lake. Oh no, howled Ruff as the kite skimmed across the water and landed in the middle of the lake. That's my new kite. Don't worry, said Choppy. Let's wait for a breeze to blow it closer to the bank. From there, I should be able to reach it without getting wet. Uh-oh. Which of our four rules aren't Choppy and Ruff following now, guys? Do you think you know? So they've already left Stan, haven't they? So they've not stayed together. It's not float, I don't think. Not calling for the emergency services. I think that's right. I think it's stop and think, isn't it? That's right. So they don't understand that the water and the bank is a dangerous place. And they're talking about getting the kite out of the lake themselves. What do you think that they should do? I don't think they should go and get it. I think they should wait for help. Oh, it's definitely the safe choice. Let's see, shall we? The friends waited for a few minutes and sure enough, the gentle breeze blew the kite towards the muddy bank. 
Choppy grabbed the stick and climbed down the steep bank to try and collect the kite. But as she leaned out to grab it, the ground under her feet fell away and she tumbled into the lake. What do you think Choppy didn't think about, guys? She didn't appreciate that the bank was slippery and that the ground wasn't safe. And now she's fallen. She's fallen into the water. What should she have remembered to do? Stop and think. She didn't think that the ground could be a danger. The water felt like ice. Although it was warm, sunny day, Choppy had never felt so cold or shocked. She gasped for air, trying to keep her head out of the water so she didn't swallow any of it. Wait, cried Ruff. Remember what we were told if, to do if we ever fell into cold water, Choppy? Float! She had been practicing how to float in her swimming lessons. Now, what do you think of the four key messages we're now going to use, guys? So if you stop and think, you stay together, what has she been practicing in her swimming lessons? That's right. Floating. He remembered that if you fall into cold water, that you should float until you feel calm. I tell you what, was that quick thinking from our rough? Or what? Well done, Ruff. So, Choppy remembered that she'd been practicing how to float in her swimming lessons. She leant back in the cold water and pushed her tummy up straight up to the sky, stretched her arms out and her legs began to float and then she could control her breathing. I'll go and get Stan to help, shouted Ruff, and she ran back up the hill as fast as he could, shouting for Stan to come quickly. Well done again, Ruff. He's called for help. He's gone and got his adult. He remembered the last of the four roars that he had to run and shouted for help as he doesn't have a phone. He knows to get help as quickly as possible and is using his loud voice and attention to get attention. After a minute, Choppy could feel her breathing begin to steady and she felt ready to swim back toward the bank. When she got there, Stan was there to help her out. He looked very worried. Choppy, Choppy, are you okay? cried Stan, pulling a soggy, cold, sorry looking Choppy out from the lake. I'm so sorry, Stan, sobbed Choppy. We should never have run off where you couldn't see us. Stan smiled and he wrapped Choppy up in a big coat and the three of them headed back up to the picnic spot. Very glad that they knew that this to, what to do in this kind of emergency. I'm never going to run off again, said Choppy. Neither am I, said Ruff. Happily, his friend that his friend was safe, and they both happily tucked in to their cheese sandwiches. So, guys, Choppy and Ruff were super lucky that they knew the four key messages of what they should do in emergency. But let's have a look at the decisions that they could have made and more sensible choices that they could have chosen. So guys, what could they have done first? 
they could have stopped and thought about what they were going to do, couldn't they? And the next thing, exactly the same, they should have stayed together with Stan. Stan, as you can see, is a trained lifeguard. So he knows what to do and he's an adult. They would never have got into difficulty if they didn't leave him. But the best thing that happened was in their swimming lesson, they were told that if they ever fell into water and they were cold and shocked is to float on their back and wait for help to come. And that's exactly what Ruff did. He ran up the hill as fast as he could. He got Stan and he got Choppy to safety. So guys, the four key messages, let's go over them one more time. Whenever you're in or near water, you should always stop and think, is it safe for you to enter that water? Next one, you should always stay together. Never go swimming by yourself. Next, if you were by accident to fall in the water, and it's super cold because it's not always as warm as what it looks. We want you to float. Stretch out into that big star position that we've practiced before. On your back, looking up to your sky, pushing your tummy up until you are nice and calm. Once you are nice and calm, you can try and make your way back to the side. Or by this point, your friend will have gone and got help as Ruff did with Stan, to bring you back to safety. Guys, I hope this has been informative and it helps you know a little bit more about being a water safety expert. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you later.